I'm on Trash Out's Take with my very good friend and horror indie extraordinaire producer, Tony Newton. How you doing, man? Oh, all right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, that's quite a good intro, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you the money later. <laughs> <laughs> it's rather apt. Um, yeah, not too bad. So what got you into filmmaking? Well, uh, well, I remember back in the... No, I, I must have been about 15 and I was went in like loads of videos, VHS and stuff like that. I've always been a huge fan of horror. So we, I think I, we went to the video camera, like the old VCR, VHS video cameras. Mm. And I think it cost, literally back then, it must have cost about three to 500 quid for a weekend. So I rented this video camera got in the garden and I'm out there with my friends with loads of ketchup making films in the back garden. Now this is, when I was about 15, so this is a good few years ago, what the sort of thing, it would have been about 93, 94. So uh, made these little short films, really bad, nothing to edit on, so you had to go straight in there and then you could watch it back on your VHS. But the thing is nowadays, so that, say those films I made, I made about 10 of these little short films they're really bad and gory and everything. But I think I recorded something, I think I recorded Robocop off a of TV over them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so that is really crazy. Like nowadays, you could do that in your back garden. In 10 minutes, you could have it up on YouTube. Yeah, no, totally. And it, do you know what I mean? It's, we're in such different times now. Man. And I think, sorry, what's that? I was just going to agree with you. No, it's, it's, it's totally crazy. So when you, you look back and you think, uh, I really wanted to get into filmmaking and in a little town, living, growing up in Clacton on Steve here and there's no way of getting into filmmaking. I made more of these little films but then I probably recorded over them again and stuff like that. There was literally no way of getting into it. I used to go down the library and you know get filmmaking books out and stuff. But other than that, I, just, I literally started writing screenplays but they stayed in folders and folders for years and years and because I couldn't get into filmmaking... I decided to uh, work in like, it was a part of the Virgin chain. So I worked for this company. Have you heard of it called Excess Music at the time it was? No, I've not heard of them. No, I think it was actually one in Portsmouth. Oh. Like, that's a thing up there. But um, yeah, I worked for that. So I was dealing with videos and VHS and I remember at the time, it was about 99 and DVDs you see it. And it was so exciting because DVDs are in format and you're getting all these films out and DVD and stuff. So... I always had that kind of connection to film. I wanted to be doing something like that. And then, I, I think it wasn't until about 2005, I used to go to all these horror cons and conventions and stuff, and I saw George Romero there, and he was outside having a cigarette. So I thought, hang on a minute, I'll take this chance. So I went outside, had a smoke with him, and I said, oh, I'm writing this zombie book. That's called a zombie rule book. He's like, oh, you've got to do this, you've got to do this. And it really spurred me on. But you see, it doesn't matter how many people see you are, you know what I mean? You said, you've got to create stuff. And I thought, yeah, that stuck with me. So from then I wrote this, the book, The Zombie Rule Book. It took a good few years for that to come out. And that came out in about 2013. And from then I just started to work on Virus of the Dead, which is a horror anthology with loads of different zombie shorts. And that's when it really kicked off. Talking of Virus of the Dead, this, the actual idea, I think it was in 2013, when I was writing a book called I'm a Zombie, which is a spin-off from this zombie rule book. And I entered a competition. It was called the Vodafone First Competition. And I think I came second in that. I didn't win anything. But the idea was for, him to, for me to make a film on a smartphone. And this would have been like the first day of film on a smartphone and all this. And the chap that actually won it just wanted to make a movie. And then I saw about a month later they were using my kind of idea of, you know, shooting his on a, on a smartphone kind of thing. Mm. I was like, oh, you buggers. But yeah, that's, that's how I actually started. I, I was doing a lot of screenplays, and I did get to work with different people, like helping doing script doctrine and working on their stuff and that, when the internet really hit it, that was. Uh, and I remember talking to people like Stuart Gordon. Mm. So this is years ago, this is like 2003. He was one of these people who was very active on internet maybe go to like the other chat rooms years ago. Yeah. We could go back and forth and all this for people and stuff. So yeah, that's that's how I already got into it. So like um <clears throat> would you say that's also when you did your first like first film or do you consider the short films when you were younger to be your first 
film? Um, yeah, they would, they would have been my first, but they were really bad. What would you consider the one that you'd say, yeah, that's when it started, that's my first film? Is it the one you did for the Vodafone competition? Yeah, but it would have been Virus of the Dead as the first film. So I think that was, I actually started that idea in 2013. But my first short film was actually, uh, it was called The Night Demon, and it was it's in Brad Twig's Friends of Fear. Ah. So that's the first ever actual short film, you know, just me on my own doing something. But yeah, that was it. That's in Brad Twig's Friends of Fear, and that's called The Night Demon in that. So that's a very sick kind of rape revenge film. Oh, lovely. Um, right, so like basically you're very well known for doing a lot of anthologies and we're going to go into a bit more of a deeper dive into that. Starting with uh, probably the one anthology that people recognise Vestra more closer to, uh, Grind Exploitation, which you've done six parts for, for Troma Films. So yeah. do you want to tell us a bit about that? Um, well, yeah, how many parts did you say that was? Six parts, wasn't it? I think it's about nine. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I, don't, I think it is. No, I don't, we did, what did we do? We did clown exploitation. I don't know what that ended up, I think, seven. Oh, yeah, and there's shock, uh, shock exploitation and... Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's, there's different names there, but I think you're up to about nine on that at the moment. And, yeah, this is clown exploitation. It was after I did Bars with Dead. I thought, I need an idea, that kind of thing, where it's like an anthology, where I'm getting a lot of people involved with it and stuff like that. So... We worked on Ryan's location and Lloyd Kaufman, he did a really good little promo clip for us. So, from Troma. So, that was that. And then he said, oh, you know, when your film's complete, send it over. So, we did that. We sent it over. Troma loved it. And then they said, oh, right, we'll take all of your crime exploitation films. So, yeah, that was that. But they're really unusual there. To be honest, I'm not, it was basically me watching Tarantino and Rodriguez's uh, Grindhouse film. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And I loved it. My favourite part of that was these, like, false trailers. When you had, like, Machete and all this stuff. And I thought, you know, this is, imagine a film full of them. Mm. But basically, that, that's what it actually is. It's like a film of false trailers. And then we threw in some short films as well. But they are really crazy, and they seem really popular, which is nice as well. Yeah, and you get like a real decent collection of in, uh, indie directors from across the road, and across the road, across the world, including... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and you've had a good couple of uh, people that we've spoken to. I believe um, David Black's done films from you. I know Dom, Dom Ziano Christoffo's done films for you, Shane Ryan. Well, yeah, all good people, really good. There's a, great, there's a great kind of team spirit in the indie, in the indie world, as you know, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Everyone's got each other's backs. Well, it's the thing, from working on many anthologies with you, we know that there is a lot of passion for people who want to get involved, and you do get to start to see more of the independent film world as you do these anthologies. Yeah, definitely. So in 2015, um, I started doing anthologies with you, and I believe we set up our first anthology, because I know you were one of the producers on the anthology that Trash Arts did, Maniacal, but the first oh, one yeah, I yeah, think brilliant. we did together was Conspiracy X and Home Videos. Well, they really, I thought, it was, I thought we did more before that. That's worrying. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> oh, dear, no, it's true. We have, we've worked on so many films together as well, we kind of lose count, do not it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I've always found with the anthologies, though, like they have given a good opportunity to different people. I've got to be able to try out different creative stuff. And although, like, um, it's kind of weird to know that we already have so many trilogies of anthologies already out there. But um, was there any particular anthology that you'd say you're like uh, very proud of? Ah, uh, um, I know it sounds bad with them. I mean, they're all different beasts, yeah. really, aren't they? But. I say probably Virus the Dead just because it's the first one. Mm. Just because, you know, that was the first one. So probably that, which was, you know, it was, the, it was the first thing that got everything really rolling. Oh, I'm going to backtrack actually now, so sorry about this. Sorry. But yeah, talking about that, I mean, it's such a weird industry to get into. Um, I remember at the time, this is going back to 2013, um, I was trying to get people into, you know, to be a part of Virus of the Dead. So many people were like, oh no, you know, you'll never get someone to be a part of this. Because the budget we had for Virus of the Dead, it was zero. We didn't have a pound in our pocket for that. So we created this literally because I know people, you know, made the films and it wasn't for zero because people were like, you know, oh, I'm putting $200 in, I'm going to make this and that. That was that. But, you know, because we approached this, but with a zero budget, 
people were like, you know, this is crazy. This hasn't been done before. No one's going to do this. No one's going to work for free. Um, and yeah, it did work out in the end, which is fantastic. There was, I actually remember speaking to Wes Craven oh, wow. a few years ago, but he was a really good supporter. He really was. He was like, no, I can't do anything for this. You know, but yeah, I remember he sent me a, a you know, an A4 picture and they're like, Tony, me I'm your friend and all this stuff. Like, oh, that's really nice. So no, he was a really nice bloke. And another one was Ray Bradbury. He was John Brim, the, the writer, Fahrenheit. Yeah, do you know him, Ray Bradbury? No, I'm trying to work out what else you've written. Oh, uh, I've got you. Andy Lyon writes so many, uh, so many books. Okay. So many. But yeah, he, he sent me this letter. And, and I said, oh, can I have some advice for filmmaking and all this? So he sent me this card and got a postcard. And it said on it, just write it. I thought, right, this is really good. And he sent me this he, he said, a big like, letter thing. And he wrote on the back, Tony, I love you. <laughs> and uh, this bloke, he's one of my favourite writers of all time. Mm. And I've got this framed in, you know, in the office kind of thing now. Because that bloke is just like a god. <laughs> yeah, a lot of no. horror icons. Yeah, I mean, loads of people. Like, chatting back and forth with these people and stuff, they're really nice. You know, and it, really, it, it got me, it spurred me on thinking, if these people are saying, you can do this, and, it, and it's basically the end of the day, they're saying, this is, it's art. But don't worry about, you know, the, the quality of, just get out there and create art. Mm, no, 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 I, t- I completely and utterly agree. Um, around this time as well, like uh, we, we, as in Trash Arts, Vestra Pictures, teamed up with Hill Burton to create Toxic Schlock. So oh, let's yeah, have a chat that. about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. It really was funny. I mean, us doing that, it's, I think it's, a, it's up for free, isn't it, now on YouTube? Yeah, it's on uh, Troma's uh, YouTube channel. It's on Troma Movies, so people can check it out. But yeah, we had a lot of fun doing that. It was a bit of a nightmare and fun at the same time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but no, I think, I must admit, it was a really cool project. I, I, I love that movie. So talking about films, like, that's one of my favourites, just because it's so crazy. Well, I remember, uh, like, when, when we were coming up with the idea, it was a case of... You and I were inspired by the old Greasy Strangler and a bit of Dawn of the Dead and trying to find a way to mix the two together in your hometown of Essex in the beach house. Yeah, it's crazy. It really, but no, it's, it's so unusual and it's, so, it's such a crazy film. And there's something that I do find myself, I, I, the other day I was like on YouTube, like, I was watching trailer trailers and it came up and I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a watch. <laughs> No, it's definitely a crazy show. I really enjoy doing that. I think we should definitely do something. We've got to do something else in the future as well. We really do. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. When we're not in a doom and... Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> this isn't going on. No, we really do, because I think there's, there's something very different. When you've got two people who, you know, two different filmmakers working together like that, you get different ideas and you spin off. And I think it adds, it adds to the production. You're not getting the same... Cause I guarantee that film is nothing like anything either of us have done on our own. No, I can completely agree with that. Just so, just in case the audience didn't know, uh, me and Ron, um, me and Ryan, me and Tony directed together Toxic Schlock with Hill Burton as one of the producers. We brought up some of our own actors, such as Chris Mill, Simon Berry, up to uh, Essex, and yeah, it was like a mass collaboration in that regard. Brilliant. Now that was actually your first feature film, wasn't it? It was, yeah. As on, as well, you know. Uh, great film you, yeah. Now, as well as like a hell of a lot of filmmaking that you do, you also do a lot for the film scene, not just the anthologies. You've also set up recently the Indie Horror Initiative. Tell us a bit about yeah. that. Oh, yes, the Indie Horror Film Creative. Oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, that's good. That's good. I mean, if you clicked on if you like that page. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, yeah, that is set up what it is in my dream. We're doing these anthology films and everything else. The reason I... Going backtracking again, the reason I started the anthology films up was to get people, you know, to submit your stuff and be confident about what you're doing and a showcase for it. So although a lot of these DVDs and stuff, they don't make money, and, you know, but they're out there. And this is the thing, it's giving filmmakers confidence. Once they've got a DVD, you know, a film on a DVD, they've got, they should be proud of that. It's like they can go to someone else on their CV. They've got that. Do you know what I mean? Mm, so that was my whole idea with that. With, you know, so with this indie horror film creative, um, what we're doing is 
it's going to be a showcase for filmmakers, although I really do want to specialise in women in horror and women in film, because the one thing I've noticed, well, as you know, is we've chatted about this before, mm. doing these anthology films and stuff, not many women submit. No, that's true. And it's, it's something, it's like a bugbear, it's like... Uh, so my theory is get, you know, get women out there, get women in horror, because there needs to be a lot more women in horror. So that is, that's a big thing, I think. But the idea behind it, I'm gonna, what I'm going to be doing is loads of showcase videos, but loads of how-tos and getting different directors and filmmakers to do how-tos and how to make this, how to do every part of filmmaking. And we're also going to be doing a film festival through that and loads of other stuff. I think my dream with that project is to have like a hub like somewhere, a location where we've got uh, 20 uh, editing suites, cameras, you know, a setup where people can come for free. That is my future plan. So it's not going to be something that's going to be like tomorrow, like, oh, right, it has to be open. But that is my end goal with that project. It's somewhere where people can come in who haven't got access to, you know, literally people who have, you know, not poor people, but people who haven't got, you know, the money to go and buy a big camera, do you know what mm. I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, it's something that I've always wanted to do in Portsmouth as well. And oh, uh, really? Yeah, because it's like it makes sense. It's it's the biggest way to be able to go. Here's some equipment. You want to make a yeah. film. You don't have to go to for university. Yeah. You want to create. Yeah, let's help it. you create. Yeah. But there's nothing out there like it, is there? That's the thing. No, there isn't, and I think with the with the <clears throat> with what you're doing right now as well, like you've got some decent people from around the world again involved. Um, no, it's really good, yeah. Yeah, because I know recently you've had uh, Peter Hodgkins from um, Horror Screen Vault join as well. Yeah, he's joined up. He's a really nice chap as well. Yeah, I've got Peter on there. He does some really good interviews with women in horror as well on there. And, and men, but yeah, he's, he's doing that. He's really good. He's nice to be, nice to have him involved. And also writing for his site, reviewing for his site, Horror Screen's video for as well. Yes, yes. So what's uh, what's next then? What's creatively next? Um, creative, but not horror no, film creative. Well, anyway, not initiative. Uh, for me, um, well, as you know, we're working on a mythical hex. Yes. Which is going to be a crazy horror film. It's going to be very different. I mean, I'm a huge fan of all the mythical films, but I'm also a fan of films like Unfriended where you're watching it, it's like, almost like a Skype or a found footage thing related, you know, connected to the internet yeah, yeah. in some way. So that's going to be like that. I'm surprised, I don't know about you, but I'm surprised there's not more films like that. Where's that director who um, decides to do it? The guy who did, um, oh God, what did he do? Nightwatch and Ben Hur. Tim, uh, Russian last name, can't pronounce it. I know what you mean, yeah, yeah. Because there was that film um, Searching with John yeah. Cho. And yeah, yeah the, really good. that's an amazing film. I was so yeah. fascinated to go, wow, this works really well. Why aren't people doing this more? That's Maybe we'll see it more. No, I think I prefer that more to, you know, better than Unfriended, that one as well. It was really good. Yeah, it was a real tense thriller. With those sort of... What's that, mate? Sorry. I was just going to say, with those sort of films, you also have uh, the film that you did with uh, Josh Schultz, um, Dark Web. Yep, Dark Web Mystery Box. That is actually out for free now. So you can oh, check that out on YouTube. And if you go to my website, Tony, uh, TonyNewton.net, I've got a link on there. I think you can watch it for free. We'll make sure to put a link to your website at the, uh, down below as well. Oh, superb. That'd be brilliant. Yeah. So that's a really fun one. That was another one. It's literally, you know, all related around the internet. And what it was, I sat there watching Dark Web Mystery Box, you know, unboxing. Yeah. It's a really strange thing to do, but I've been watching those for about, good, for about three years now. And I'm fascinated by them. I thought, this is really crazy. So we'll try and do something related to that. And it was, it was a lot of fun doing it as well, it really was. So that's coming out on DVD. And we also have got Horror Box coming up. Which yes. We found out last night, didn't we? Yeah. The Horror Box is kind of interesting because for us personally, these are films that we produced back in 2017. So you have Terror on Film, the uh, self tape and Blood Tales. Um, three very different kind of films for us as well. We have a documentary, we have an erotic horror, and we have an anthology. But yeah, they're all coming out on the one, D, one box set, aren't they? Yeah, one box called Horror Box, yeah. And this is yeah, another... Com 
Trashards, that another club where you start. So yeah, it's Extra Pictures and Trashards. Yeah, I was going to say it's another company as well that we have quite a few uh, films out with them because you also have your VHS Lives as well. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, VHS Lives, that's the documentary series. And I've got VHS Lives 1, VHS Lives 2 and 3, VHS Nasty. Nice. Out now on DVD as well. So, to go back to the original question, like creatively, though, is there anything you're writing or, or looking to want to film in the future? Um, there is. There's so many things. I know it sounds daft, but I I'm not one for thinking about the future. Future. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm one of these people where I think about what, what I've got going on that this week, and that's hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. No, there's so many. There's so many things I would, would like to do. And they, they end up, I do write a lot of screenplays. So the trouble is I've got literally about, I think, five or three or three, four, five screenplays here finished. And I've got three half finished, four of But yeah, so I've got loads of screenplays, but I don't like them sitting there, do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I mean, I've had the pleasure to read your screenplays. And what I love about your writing is that you, although there's like a bit of Tony in there, you know how to get the writing correct for the kind of film it is. So the characters feel like they're suited for those scripts. And I, I wish that your scripts could get out there more. And I know you have recently been trying to get one of your films out there a bit more. Yeah. No, it's, very, it's so hard, isn't it, getting, getting scripts out there. It really is. Yeah. I've had so many people in the past where you sign like, you know, sign an agreement, oh, yeah, we're gonna, we need to lock this in for three years, we're going to get this made, and God knows what. And then some, you know, most of the time it just doesn't happen. Mm. you've wasted a couple of years on that screenplay just sitting there but I'm one of these people where I won't write another screenplay I'm thinking right I need one of these to be sold now <laughs> before I do another one it's always the dream isn't it it really is oh I'm thinking I've got these sitting here so I'm thinking to myself right I might turn them into books do you know what I mean just say oh do like a screenplay and just like put it up you know this is the screenplay of this film that never got made that's another thing you've recently um, done when it comes to writing. You recently released a poetry book, which once again you opened up to other people to submit work to. That's uh, that's on Amazon, is that correct? Yeah, that's called uh, Deathly Sorrow, and that is a, it's another anthology. So it's all, you know, got loads of different writers in there, and really good book. I was reading that last night. I mean, I, I, don't, normally, I don't just watch my films on YouTube <laughs> and read my own books, but, you know, why not? <laughs> but no, that's no, totally reasonable, man. Like when you've got as much as you got out there as well, why not, eh? That's it. Well, no, my excuse for that book is, is that I only did a couple of poems in it, so I was I was sitting there last night admiring other people's work. <laughs> that's not too bad. So let's say um, um, this is our final question for today. Uh, if you had the ultimate budget, there's no constraints of Corona or anything in life. What would be that dream project you would want to direct, write, or produce? Right, I'm trying to think, dream project, right, there's a few, so, uh, I think Lucy, Lucy or Fucci's uh, Zombie, Zombie Flesh Eaters, I'd okay. love to remake that. The old, is that Itali Italian film, isn't it? Yeah, that's it, oh, that film is just stunning, I think I'd love to have a go at that, remaking that. Or if, if that wasn't available, if, like, Jess Franco's Vampiros Lesbo, <laughs> is that how you say it? Oh. Uh. <laughs> um, I love that film. I think it's stunning. It literally, you could, well, it just sounds really dark. I was just about to say, I watched that with the sound off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it, it came out very wrong. I've got a version of it. I think it's uncut, and I think it is in, it's like not dubbed, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's obviously re reading, so I, I watched that with the sound off. <laughs> well, but that came out too wrong, didn't it, that? <laughs> <laughs> the kind of film it is, yeah, you could question why you turn the sound off for that one.
<laughs> I'm surprised you didn't mention your um because I know you've been working for a long time on a witch script. Sorry, what's up the witch list? No, I'm not on that. <laughs> not no. yet, no, no. I've got on the poor list. You've been working on the witch film, the... Sorry, I know Bella? what you mean now. Yeah, I know what you mean now. Right, right, you mean writing, yeah. So yes. Yeah. There's a film I'm trying to... I'd love to do it, and... It's, the title has changed many times, and it's like about these people who go around in a, a little town, and the town is full of witches. And it's like a ghost hunting film, and then at the end, I'm not telling everyone the end now because it's not done, but it's going to be this huge kind of Wicker Man esque thing at the end that I've got, you know, worked out. And I sat in there with even storyboards, you know, scribbling away some pictures of this. But yeah, that's, that's, like a, that's another dream project, I'd say. Like, the trouble is with that, it's like, I know I couldn't do that on, you know, very low budget. I'm not talking millions, but I just love that ending to be something, you know, really... St- do, you like, do you like the I think you like the film as well, one of my favourites is called Kill List. Yes, yeah, yeah. I love that. It's British, but you've got a lot of cult in there. I'm a, you know, I love that kind of film. I think there's a lot more to be discovered in there in that kind of... Era. Yeah, it's a very like there are many films like that really. I think that's why Wicker Man stands so high for so many people is that there aren't many yeah. similar folky cult films. Yeah. But you know the funny thing, I've chatted with so many different um horror directors mm. and I've actually said this too. I said, Look, I'm a huge fan of, I think it's a, is it a cult, so it's not a cult, is it? It's the occult. But there's not many films like that. There's there's like they say Wicker Man, there's that kill there's this, there's this, there's this. There's Devil's Rain. There's that film, I, I think you like it, it's called, is it The Black Coat's Daughter, February? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good film. Love that film. There's all those films like that. And apparently what these people are saying is these directors are like, we don't want to touch films like this. Do you yeah. know what I mean? How come? People don't want to be associated with, with these occult-like things mm. because they're like, you know, we're going to get a curse on us. <laughs> I'm not joking. You may, you might think this sounds totally crazy, but I spoke to some people, some really you know, big name director, and they're like, "No, we we don't touch that. That's something we don't touch with the occult." <laughs> that reminds me of that Shadow series that's come out recently about the cursed films. Oh, that is so good, isn't it? Really yeah. amazing series. That is fantastic. I mean, I get to tell you something here. Grand Exploitation Six Six Six, which is is part six in the Grand Exploitation trilogy. Not a trilogy, is it? Anyway, so with that film, I had five different filmmakers who came to me and went, look, we're pulling out of this. And I was like, oh, what are you on about? And they're like, you changed the song. You said it was going to be called Grand Exploitation 6, but now you've called it Grand Exploitation 666. We don't want to be in a film associated with the devil. <laughs> I'm not lying. This is, you couldn't make this up, could you? Like, but no, people are doing no. this. People are like, and it's true. And even the other half, she's like, you know what, do you really want to call it that 666? You know, uh, people, you know, you might invite spirits and all this stuff. You know, the only spirits I invite <laughs> is Jack Daniels and Jim Beam. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't come around, you know, enough as they should either. <laughs> Thank you so much for chatting to us, Tony. Uh, I'm going to put the link to your website under underneath. Check out the indie horror. Check out all the films we've discussed. I hope you've had a good day, man. Oh, cheers. Yeah, I think you're going to say I'm going to put the phone down now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been really nice speaking to you, and I must admit, thanks for all your, all your hard work. You're another, per- you're another person like me, where you do so much for the you know indie horror film scene as well with Trash Arts. Well, when, we're that, never going to you know, I always say to you, look, hang on, when is the next Trash Arts production out? Have you got a you know series? Send it to me straight away because I'm a big fan of Trash Arts as well. And it's always deeply appreciated, man. Definitely. No, take care. Thank you very much. Cheers. You too. Speak soon. Bye-bye. Speak soon. Bye. Cheers.